Hi, New Hope family. Pastor Courtney here. How's it going? See if you can tell what I'm trying to say. Ready? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. <laughs> Whoa. Could you guys understand my words? I love this game. I said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I remember hearing those words on the playground a lot when I was growing up. We talked a few weeks ago about choosing our words wisely in kids' church, and that phrase definitely came up, and we talked about it a lot. And ever since then, I haven't been able to stop thinking about the profound power of our words. In fact, I think the adult translation for sticks and stones would be, sticks and stones can bruise my body for a few days, but words can scar my soul for life. I was thinking of David. He knew a thing or two about having some serious enemies. <laughs> and he wrote in Psalm 64, 3, that evildoers sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. You know, whether you're eight, like some of the kids in my class, or 80, you can probably remember feeling pretty pierced by someone's cruel word arrows. And maybe you still hear some of those hurtful messages in your mind from years ago. They seem to replay when we feel the most vulnerable, don't they? Words like, I'm sick of you, or I never loved you, or you'll never change, or you'll never amount to anything. Words have power. And this truth was powerful when I shared it with our NH kids. But as an adult living in a social media driven, decidedly divided society, it was pretty thought provoking for me too. God's word has a wealth of wisdom when it comes to our words. Creative words create and destructive words destroy. Hurtful words crush and helpful words build up. Toxic words poison while soothing words heal. Faith-filled words bring life, and faithless words bring death. Think about it. With the simple words, let there be light, God's power to create was revealed. And with the words, it is finished, Jesus gave up his spirit, and the redemption of that creation was put into motion. Words have power. Like Proverbs 18.21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. What you say can give life to other people or it can take it away. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. It says in Proverbs 12, 18, godly words can revive, heal, and change our lives, while ungodly words have the power to bind, imprison, and destroy. Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their, main, to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So what are reckless, unwholesome words? They're words that you know you'll regret as soon as they leave your mouth. <laughs> We've all been there, right? Reckless, unwholesome words are abusive words that are hurled in the heat of an argument. They're words that tear down, insult, and curse. We can probably quickly identify words like this in our own lives and in the lives of others. And we can all agree that these words are painful and destructive. Just like the Bible says, they bring death and they pierce hearts. And when it comes to those kind of words, we need to pray the same prayer that David did in Psalms 141.3. Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. That's my prayer. It's obvious from God's word that we need to choose our words wisely. But what about what others say to us? I've been thinking about that too. If you're like most people, you can recall several of the many toxic phrases that have been directed at you. And while we obviously can't control what others say about us, we can control what we believe. Since toxic words can destroy our souls, We've got to passionately guard our hearts against them. Solomon told his son in Proverbs chapter 4, Listen closely to my words. And I love this. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Basically, we need to keep others from dumping their toxic waste into our water supply. And countless times a day, when it comes to what you hear and say, you have choices to make. When you hear the words of others, you can choose to receive them as truth, or reject them as lies. This practice is important when it comes to unwholesome words, but also to words of encouragement. 
I myself have become pretty adept at refusing to accept the reckless words of others as truth for me. But for me, it's also hard to accept the life-giving words about myself. <laughs> but I'm getting better. Proverbs 16.24 says, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. And I'm thankful for the people in my life who have fed me sweet words of affirmation and encouragement, even when they were hard to believe. The life-giving words of others have often kept me going. When I'm down and feeling inadequate, I have life-giving friends that remind me who I am and what I have in Christ. When I feel like I'm drowning and things feel so dark, God's word has reminded me that he is with me and his promises for my life are true. And I might be a pretty regular gal, but when my kiddos tell me that I'm the best mama ever, that makes me feel like a superhero. <laughs> words have power. My hope today is that you can also remember life-giving words spoken to you at the precise moment you needed them. Maybe someone told you, I believe in you, and it was all you needed to move forward. It could have been someone saying, I'm so proud of you, and that affirmation touched your soul. Or maybe a close friend shared, I'm more thankful for you than you could ever know. And in return, those words meant more to you than your friend would ever know. Every time you open your mouth to utter a word, you have the opportunity to speak life or the temptation to take it. I want you to think back through the last few days. When you spoke to others, what did they hear? Either you aimed sharp, poison-tipped darts at their hearts, hopefully not, or you injected them with life-giving, God-honoring booster shots. What I want us to think about today is that words may hurt, but they can also heal. So let's share that life-giving healing power with those around us today. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for so much truth from your word when it comes to the power of our words. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would choose wisely what we say, but also what we take into our heart and what we believe about ourselves. I pray, Jesus, that you would give us wisdom, God, in everything that we do and in everything that we say, that we would honor you, God, and build other people up today. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, New Hope. I love you and see you soon. <laughs>